Hello again, okay, here in this video. I want to talk a little bit about eugenics, that's right. A little bit about our founding fathers, a little bit about Hillary Clinton, that's right. That's right, Hillary Clinton. A little bit about Margaret Seidman. A little bit about the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And what's really going down in this country. And how population, how uh, raw peasants, how raw slaves, how raw nobody. How the school systems taught eugenics through natural selection. You didn't even know they were doing it. They were teaching Adolf Hitler stuff through uh, natural selection, that's right. They were teaching you how to stereotype out others. They were teaching you how to be, uh, think that you're somebody or not. How to think that you're above somebody. But what you don't realize is this. Anybody, anybody that's broke, anybody that don't have a lot of money, is an undesirable. Has nothing to do with looks. No, has nothing to do with looks at all. Has nothing to do with race, looks, gender. Has nothing to do with nothing. It all has something to do with one thing. The rich, the bankers, that's right, believe that anybody that hasn't got lots of money is an undesirable. So does Margaret Sanger, okay? So let me run you through a series of things here. I also want you to see what Hillary Clinton really thinks about our founding fathers and uh, how the manipulation is in here because you're going to get to see how the government, what the government thinks about our founding fathers and how they're turning our founding fathers into terrorists. And the reason they're doing that is because the bankers, that's right, see the bankers' enemies was our founding fathers. That's who our founding fathers fought against. You couldn't tell Nate that on the radio show because he's too dense to see it. So let me show you some things and maybe some people see what I'm talking about. So watch out and I'll be back with you in a moment. Even before 9-11, FEMA was quietly indoctrinating local police to have a hatred of the founding fathers and everything our constitutional republic stands for. Who was the first terrorist organization in the United States? <clears throat> Who? Founding fathers. Yeah. You mean Thomas Jefferson? Oh, yeah. You mean uh, George Washington? Oh, yeah. Paul Revere? Yeah. These guys right here, let me ask you something. Did they try to scare people? Oh, yeah. They tried to intimidate the British. Did they try to, did they use acts of violence? Your founding fathers, my founding fathers, were involved in acts of terrorism against British officials because they systematically had British officials assassinated. Assassinate. Legal counsel nominee Don Johnson, she equated having a baby with slavery. Those views were echoed by Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger. She was a eugenist who uh, was hailed last month by her own Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. I am really in awe of her. Okay. Not only did Hillary Clinton say that, listen how she compared Sanger to one of our founding fathers last week. I admire Thomas Jefferson. I admire his words and his leadership, and I deplore his unrepentant slaveholding. I admire Margaret Sanger being a pioneer in trying to empower women to have some control over their bodies, and I deplore statements that you have referenced. That is the way we often are when we look at flawed human beings. There are things that we admire and things we deplore. Birth control is not merely an individual problem. It is not merely a national question. It concerns the whole wide world, the ultimate destiny of the human race. In his last book, Mr. H.G. Wells speaks of the meaningless, aimless lives which cram this world of ours. Hordes of people who are born, who live, yet who have done absolutely nothing to advance the race one iota. Their lives are hopeless repetitions. All that they have said has been said before. All that they have done has been done better before. Such human weeds clog up the path, drain up the energies and the resources of this little earth. We must clear the way for a better world. We must cultivate our garden.
1922, Sanger wrote a book entitled The Pivot of Civilization. In it is a chapter called The Cruelty of Charity, where she blasts programs that provide medical and nursing facilities to slum mothers as insidiously injurious. In the same book, Sanger called for the cessation of charity, for the segregation of morons, misfits, and the maladjusted, and for the sterilization of genetically inferior races. She also argued that organized attempts to help the poor was the surest sign that our civilization has bred, is breeding, and is perpetuating defectives, delinquents, and dependents. The Birth Control Review was Sanger's official publication for the American Birth Control League, and in 1932 she outlined her plan for peace. The main objectives of the Population Congress would be to apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to that grade of population whose progeny is already tainted to give certain dysgenic groups in our population their choice of segregation or sterilization and to apportion farmlands and homesteads for these segregated persons where they would be taught to work under competent instructors for the period of their entire lives. Sanger's admiration for the eugenics programs of Nazi Germany were well known at the time. In 1933, the Birth Control Review published Eugenic Sterilization, an Urgent Need, by Ernst Rudin, who was Hitler's director of genetic sterilization and the founder of the Nazi Society for Racial Hygiene. In her praise for the eugenics programs in Germany, Sanger called for the implementation of such programs in the United States, specifically targeting African Americans. Adolf Hitler bragged that his most powerful domestic tool used by the Nazis to control the people was the servile clergy, and his favorite Bible verse was Romans 13, Render unto Caesar. Sadly, the Boy Scouts of America have now contracted with the Department of Homeland Security and are now training more than 20,000 Boy Scouts in anti-terror urban warfare mount training. The federal grants are very specific. The Scouts are trained to carry out seek and destroy missions against disgruntled veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. Good evening, everyone. Homeland Security is enlisting some unlikely new recruits to fight terrorism and help with other emergencies. The Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts across the country and here in East Tennessee are now taking part. Nine-year-old Elise Murphy has already earned a lot of Girl Scout patches. And now, every member of the 3.4 million Girl Scouts of America is now being trained by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to aid and support Homeland Security in disaster and anti-terror operations. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, uh, and at some point at that point you do it. Well, as you can see, they're teaching you that uh, our founding father were terrorists. <laughs> of course they are. That's what the bankers want you to believe. The real terrorist wants you to believe that the good guys are terrorists. That's a lot like your Patriot Act. And that's right, that they passed after 9-11. That makes every citizen in the United States a terrorist. Every single citizen in this country is a terrorist. Then look at... Uh, Hillary Clinton, she admires Martha Sagner, you know. Martha Sagner, well, what does she have to say? Well, she has to say that you're an undesirable if you don't have money. And you're an undesirable if you're a misfit. It's uh, natural selection, right? That only the wealthy shall have life. Anybody that's less than wealthy shall not have life. That's basically what she's saying. Okay, so now I want you to think about something else. When they crashed the United States dollar, you're going to have millions of people broke. So if we go with uh, Hillary Clinton's belief and Margaret Sanger's belief, that means 90% of everybody in the United States will become an undesirable. You must die because you're now an undesirable. Do you see what I'm saying, people? This is what power does to the human mind. This is how sick the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers really are.
And if we do not stand up together or bring a stop to this, we're all going to be pain. And look what they're doing to our Boy Scouts and our Girl Scouts. That's right. Just like in Nazi Germany, indoctrinating your kids. Why do you think the United Nations is for teaching your children sex and masturbation at five years old? So that they can use it for a double-edged sword to take your children away from you so that the government can have their hands on your children so they can teach them what you saw here. Exactly. We need to stand up and put a stop to this, people. And we need to lock the, lock the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the entire clan up. Because they all deserve to be behind bars. We need to stand together globally, and we need to bring a stop to them. We need to stop the division, and we need to stop them before they stop you from breathing. Because these people are serious. They're going to take your life. Give us some thought. Leave your comments. To the next video, you have a good one.